Manchester United have already made their first signing, but it's now time to change the squad even more. As you can see in the inbox, we've got seven emails all telling me that scout reports have been finalized. So let's check these players out. So the first position we are looking at is our CDM role. We've got Enzo and Paul Lozano here. Now, I think looking at the stats... Paul Lozano takes it in pretty much every single stat. So he's who we're going to go for. We're going to shortlist him and shortly we'll go for him. The first centre-back to come back is... All right, I don't know about that one. Julio Cesar and Ciso, the right midfielder that we scouted, has come back as an overall 63. Tyrese Dolan, on the other hand, has come back as an overall 70, and he's only 20 years old. I think this one looks like a decent run. As does Joe Gelhart, 72 rated overall, only 20 years old, potentially someone we could grow, and overall his stats look pretty decent. Jao Pedro, on the other hand, is 71 rated. 20 years old i don't know but just looking at his stats it doesn't look as good as the other guys and the final bit of business is david de gea an offer is coming for 46.1 million now that is a pretty sizable offer and frankly i think we need to make this career mode a little bit harder he might be the guy that has to go so i actually asked for some feedback on how you guys think my videos are going over in my discord link in the description down below if you want to join the discord and the feedback that i got back was this career mode's far too easy playing as manchester united is a bit of a cheat code because the starting 11 is already there it's already exactly where we want it to be so I'm going to change up the aim of this career mode a little bit. I think we're going to be a bit more relentless with who we sell. And we're going to get rid of a lot more players. So even if they're in our starting eleven, And you know that I would personally keep them at United. We still might sell them. So David De Gea is one for example that I would keep a hold of. But it looks like we might have to sell. Just to make the career mode a little bit more interesting. And make it a little bit more challenging as well. Hopefully you guys agree with that. Let me know in the comments down below right now. Whether you think we should make this harder. By selling some more key players. Now David De Gea is quite an easy one to get rid of really. When you think about it. We're still going to negotiate. I'm going to try and get a little bit more money for this de deal. But I think that he's one that we arguably can get rid of. Because even though yes I would personally keep him at United. I think he's very much at the point now where a new young keeper coming in would be kind of realistic, really, in the grand scheme of things. I think United are very much on the search for a new keeper as, it's, as it stands in real life right now. So, 31-year-old goalkeeper going for 46 mil is pretty decent already. I'm going to see if I can get it up. Ooh, do I try and get Timber as part of the deal? I don't think it'll work. So, I'm going in with a new offer of 55 mil to see what they say. Okay, they're not willing to go for 55 mil, but they can go as high as 50. I think that's very decent. I'm actually going to accept that offer. Um, I don't want him to go personally, but to make this career mode a little bit more exciting and a little bit more challenging... We're going to let go of our star goalkeeper. That's now a position we need to fill. I'm not going to lie. I almost feel a little bit sick having just accepted that offer. To make it clear, I would not do that in real life at all. Oh, the offers are flying in. We got one for Varane. We got one for Lindelof. Now, the Varane one is to go to Arsenal. Now, for me, I would expect top dollar if he's going to Arsenal. I am not selling him to Arsenal for anything cheap or reasonable, frankly. I'm looking at player swaps because... Martinelli, Bukayo Saka are two players that are shouting out to me. And I would argue both of those would be potential starters in our team. The thing is, I just don't think they'll go for it. I don't want Arsenal to get Varane on the cheap. So I've gone for a pretty ridiculous offer. I'm going for Gabriel Martinelli and I'm also going for 30 million. And they don't want to do it. Fair enough. Well, I'll, I'll let that go. Varane's one that we can happily keep anyway. One player that can definitely go out the door, though, is Victor Lindelof. For 17 million going to Bayern Munich. In fact, I'm probably not even going to argue this deal. I think that that's a reasonably good price. Yeah, we could, we could try and get a little bit more. I was going to be like, yeah, I'll accept 17.6. I feel like that's fair enough. But then in the back of my head, I'm like, no, Matt. There's there's this rating system now. They'll tell you that it's a D. Now, I really want Gravenberch. 
I, I do want to get him, but I don't think him and Victor Lindelof are quite on the same level. I've asked for 20.6 and they've taken it. So we've actually managed to get another 3 million out of that deal, which isn't too bad at all. So that goalkeeping position is now something that needs to be filled, you know, assuming that De Gea leaves. Aside from the goalkeepers for a second, this Maximilian Bayer guy looks very decent. He's got a sprint speed between 90 and 99. We'll take a piece of that, please. I've gone back to my youth academy because Ibrahim Allison is still he's still shouting out to me 74 rated overall cm slash cdm i think he's someone we should get in right now i think this is probably a very decent signing so you know what we're gonna go to promote to senior team we're gonna get allison in and we're gonna start training in big time to see what he can get to by the end of the season the first goalkeeper we could swoop in for is myla from Leeds united it would be an interesting transfer considering he's going from arch rival to arch rival but it's something that's very interesting he's a very good goalkeeper at decent young age someone that's caught my eye is luca gamello now he's a 22 year old goalkeeper but his preliminary report says he's got good goalkeeping reflexes kicking positioning handling diving it looks like he's got the whole package so what i'm going to do is i'm going to at least uh, staff busy okay i can't even look at what he's like we'll shortlist him and then once we've got a scout free we'll scout him an offer's coming for Jaden sancho from real madrid and they're willing to offer camavinga okay this could be an interesting deal jesus okay so Real Madrid are looking to offer camavinga as part of a swap deal sancho's market value is between 60.7 and 89.1 oh my god but how much is Camavinga worth? So Camavinga's only worth 32.5, but he's 19 years old and 79 rated. And arguably a better young prospect than Jaden Sancho is. Ooh, you know what? We 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 could negotiate this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and up the transfer fee. I still want Camavinga for Jaden Sancho. I think that's a decent deal, but. I want 20 million on top. Camavinga's rated at 32. You know, market value of Jin Sancho's 53. 20 mil on top of Camavinga. Is that doable? Oh my god, they've taken it. Okay. We uh we could have an interesting deal here. In addition to that, we're cleaning out players. They're not necessarily the players that I would get rid of in real life, but it does mean that we're kind of making it a bit more interesting. Ibrahim Allison has come to us and said, I've been dreaming about this happening. Thanks for giving me a chance in the senior squad, boss. I'm desperate to show everybody what I can bring to the team. I know there's more to come from you. I was impressed, son. You didn't let anyone down. I was impressed, son. Welcome into the dressing room. Hopefully, Ibrahim Allison can be a future prospect. I think if we're going to go even further with the explanation of this career mode now and how we're going to take it forward is Manchester United are going through a rebuild. When you're rebuilding something, you need to start from the bottom. It might be first season we lose the majority of our games because we've got rid of all of our like star players and we're playing with bare bones. Um, and then from season two onwards, we start to build back up again. You guys wanted to see a more interesting career mode. So hopefully this is what it is. And you know what? Camavinga might slot nicely into that midfield. It will see most likely Ericsson fall out of the team, unfortunately. But it's a nice young player that I want to get involved. And that's kind of what this career mode is about now. Okay, some more scout reports have come in. Let's see what these guys are looking like. Oh, I was excited about this one. Collins from Dortmund, 61 over. Overall, aged 18. Ooh, is he worth a punt or not? Voskovic could be worth a punt. He's 20 years old, centre-back, already 72 rated. I'm going to put him on the shortlist. Okay, this one I'm excited about because uh, Jamie Binoy Gittins is 17 years old. He's already 67 rated and he's a promising winger, which is ideal considering we're getting rid of Jaden Sancho right now. Another 17-year-old we could go for is uh, Yusufa Mukoko, who's 17 years old, 69 rated, shortlist. And finally, Mateus Tell, 64 overall, 17 years old, promising striker. I think he just misses out. I think that there's other guys uh, like Mukoko who look better than him. We've got an, a loan offer for Zidane Iqbal, which I think is probably quite interesting. It's loan to buy. I'm straight up rejecting it. I'm not interested in a loan to buy. Next up, we've got Anthony Alanga on a one-year loan to Roma. Jose wants to go, does he? Um, 
I don't know what to do with this one. Because uh, let's have a look at our team. Let's see what we got back up at right wing. Before we do that, we've got um, Mr. Eric Ten Hag's got an email saying that Rashford is ready to play at striker. So do we now get rid of Ronaldo? Other than Alanga, we got Palestri, we got Shaw Tire. That's it for right wing position as far as I can see. So I don't think Alanga's one that I want to get rid of right now. I know he's loan listed, I believe, but I don't think I want to get rid of him at this second. Just because we've decided to go with a different direction in this career mode now, and suddenly he's a player that will probably play a lot more. A player that's wanted to leave in real life is Cristiano Ronaldo, and I think we're going to grant him his wish, because he's going to be another player, a big name, the biggest name, arguably, in Manchester United's history, is going to leave the club to allow this uh, whole series now to be a proper rebuild. Starting from the bottom... Everybody leaving. Ronaldo, you're transfer listed. I'm very sorry. Okay, what we got here? Who is this heading out the door? It's Victor Lindelof. Um, he's, he's heading off. Um, and this is the one. Who, no, it's not the one that gets Camavinga. Where's he going? I can't even remember. Bayern Munich or something. But Victor, thank you very much. We'll see you soon. So Manchester United to Bayern Munich. Victor Lindelof, 20.6 mil. Decent price. Got a D. Oh, God. You could have made 3.2 more profit. Um, okay, so I could have been slightly more demanding in negotiations. But apart from that, I think that's good business. Is there any way in this list to hide the players that aren't actually at the club? Do you know what I mean? Because I can see Henderson, but Henderson isn't with us at the moment. I just want all of the list of players that I have at my disposal. I've just gone into the development plan of Kosanu whilst I'm here. And I'm going to put him as a stopper to get his physical, his defending and his pace up. Action required. Jane Sancho and his agent have reached an agreement with Real Madrid. The deal to swap Jane Sancho... And, uh, and Camavinga will finalise as soon as you agree personal terms with Camavinga. Since the swap deal also included a £20.6 million fee, the board will allocate £18 million to your current transfer budget as soon as you finalise the deal. So, let's go and make this action. Make sure we go and give a um, negotiation now to Camavinga to give him a contract so that we can get him in the door and say goodbye to Sancho. So Camavinga's currently on 67k a week. Now I'm willing to put that up. I'm going to go up to 80k a week and see what he says. Uh, 85k a week. I think that's a decent amount. And we're also going to give him a bit of a sign-on bonus. we got 242 mil to play with, frankly. So we can give him a £2 million sign-on bonus. I don't think that's completely out of order. Um, as for bonuses, I'm going to go for... Hmm, bonuses and goals, mate? No, appearances. Appearances, if he gets 25 appearances in a year, he gets another mil. Sure, let's submit that offer and see what he says. Uh, he's, he's, he's happy. Camavinga is in for five years on what is really a pretty low weekly wage. Now, you'd argue Camavinga's probably going to be one of the main people this season going forward. He's, he's definitely one of the bigger names in the squad now. In fact, I'm starting to look at this team, and I'm kind of wanting to change it to the point that we've just got the players that I've bought in the side. Does that make sense? Saying that, I can't actually see Camavinga on there. Tell you what, I need a left winger, and I need it now. Before that, we've got Allsberg coming in for Phil Jones, 2.1 mil. Um, is he worth more than that? I really highly doubt it. I uh, might just accept that one, if I'm honest. I can't be bothered to try and get a couple of 100k for Phil Jones. We do now have an interesting offer from Milan for Christian Eriksen. It includes Pobega in a swap deal. Um, I don't know who Pobega is. He's a 23-year-old centre midfielder who doesn't look great. I'm not really interested in that deal, if I'm honest with you. I'm going to outright reject that one. I just I just have no interest in that player. Melier has come back as a 78 overall from Leeds United goalkeeper. Is he someone we get in? I don't know. I don't know if he's really worth it. I'm going to shortlist him and we're going to have a look at our options in a minute. Victor Lindelof and his representatives have agreed the personal terms with Bayern Munich and he is now gone. We have already seen that happen. Talks around De Gea's move to Ajax have broken down. They couldn't agree on personal terms. Okay, so now he potentially stays for the season. There is a loan offer for Palestri. It's a two-year loan offer. Can we get rid of him for two years? I think we probably can. 
Um, because Ilanga being kind of our main backup at the moment anyway, unless we get someone else in. So I'm going to accept the offer for Palestri. And the answer on the Roma Ilanga deal is a reject, I think. Tuan Zebe is saying that he thinks he can do a job for us. Um, it'll take some hard work, but there's a chance you might get in, mate. Uh, I have to say I'm pretty surprised to hear you're looking to sell me. Uh, you've been trying to get away all summer, Cristiano, frankly. So you know what? It's kind of worth it. I've really enjoyed my football here. And if it's up to me, I wanted to go and play. I, I wouldn't want to go and play anywhere else. Um, okay. I'm looking at options. Maybe we don't sell Ronaldo. He's only got a year left anyway. That's going to have to be one for the comments. Let me know. Should we sell Cristiano Ronaldo or should we try and keep him? Or is it depending on what offer comes in? So here we are in the transfer hub looking at all the players that we've shortlisted this episode and whether we want to go ahead with any deals at this stage. So, Gamelo, uh, we didn't manage to scout him yet, so I'm going to leave him and we might go for Melier. You know what? 23 mils a lot. I'm going to go and scout Gamelo and see if he's better than Melier before we make a decision there. Why is it still saying staff are busy? They're not busy. Either way, at centre-back, we've got a couple of options. So we've got Vuskovic, who's 72 rated, age 20, which is very decent, to be fair. And there's a lot of room for growth there. Or we've got Naman Namdi Collins, the German 18-year-old centre-half, who is equally looking decent. Or we just go for both, because I don't think this is going to cost an arm and a leg. We've got a market value of 850 and a market value of 4.1. We'll go for Vuskovic first. I fancy him a little bit of a Nemanja Vidic regen, potentially, or different nationality, I believe, but it's close enough. Um, I think he could be decent. I've started off by putting 3 million. They actually want Twan Zebe and 1.5 million, which is interesting. I'm going to counter that. Um, if they're wanting Twan Zebe as well, they're not getting any money from me. That is probably what I'm going to say there. So... If I can take this down to absolutely zero, and we just swap the two, I might be interested. There we go. That's that's a deal done. Twan Zebe for this Vuskovic guy is the deal we put through. Um, if Twan Zebe breaks down, we might have to go back in for Vuskovic and try and put it as a bit of an actual purchase in financial money. At the moment, we're just trading human beings like they're Pokemon cards. So I've put Vuz Vuzkovic down as in the rotation, which is kind of where he should be anyway. I'm going to try and get him on a five-year deal as well to get as much out of him as possible with no sell-on clause. Now, wage-wise, I don't know what to put here because I feel like 10 grand is next to nothing, but he's a very young lad, so he might actually accept it. We're going to put it in. Oh my god, no, it's a bit of an insult. Oh no, he's walking away. No. We balls that up. We balls that up big time. We'll have to go back in for Vuskovic at a later date. Next up, we've gone in for Collins at 700k. They think it's a little lower. They want 740. Have 740. That doesn't bother me. Right, now it's time for his wages. He's going to be a rotation player at best, frankly. Um, Four-year deal. I can accept a four-year deal. We're not going to have a release clause, but what are we going to put money-wise for his wages? He's currently on a 1.4k a week. I reckon if you put him on, I don't know, because I feel like putting him on like 7k a week or something, that is pretty mad, <laughs> really. The grand scheme of things, that's mental. He's earned a lot of money there. So I don't really know what to do here. I've gone for 10k, a 10k signing on bonus, 7k a week, 300 grand if he makes 10 appearances. Reasonable offer, he's taken it. We've, we've nailed him down for cheap. So if he grows to be a bit of a beast, that's a bargain. And here we go. New signing coming in the door for United is Collins from Borussia Dortmund, a young centre-back who is bolstering out our centre-back position, but also, arguably could be one that actually ends up taking part in the first team, especially if we manage to get rid of a load of players. Okay, how are they going to rate this transfer? Price rating, a C. Okay, it's a good price apparently. Overall, not good enough though as a signing. Well, we'll see because in the future, I think he will be. So at the moment, this is what our first team is looking like. No massive changes in here this episode, but we are looking at Sancho potentially moving on. 
Ronaldo potentially moving on and if someone else comes back in De Gea could move on too as well as Varane so there's a number of players as well as Ericsson actually people seem to be sniffing around as well there's a number of players that could leave the club our reserves now look like this Rashford is our new striker up front because he can now play in striker Elanga on the right, Garnacho on the left, Van der Beek, Allison, the new youth signing, Fred, Shaw, Kosanu and Collins are two new centre halves, Wan Bissaka and Dubravka in goal. Now, there's a high chance we could lose a number of players in this reserve team, but it just goes to show that the squad depth is lacking in some areas especially left wing and considering left wing is where sancho is and he's the player that's most likely to leave soon we need to get someone in left wing quick and that's where our final signing of the episode comes in we've still got some other guys to go for so don't think that we're completely done with signings yet but for this episode at least bunoy gittins now, I think this guy could go on to be pretty special. He's currently market valued at 2.6 mil. Um, they're asking price 3.2. We might be able to get him for around 2.55. So, I'm going to go in, see if we can get this guy, because I think he's a hot young talent. So, I'm going to go in for 2.5 million and see what these guys say. Um, they actually want to do a swap. They want Bernard. Um, the centre back that we've got that's kind of meant to be going out on loan. I'm not too interested in selling here, am I? For Gittins, a straight up swap plus a little bit of dollar. It might not be a bad idea. But I'm actually going to remove the exchange player and here is why. There seems to be a glitch in this game at the moment where you tend to lose players like you you tend to not be able to uh, it's a reasonable price cool nice one um you tend to not be able to get a transfer over the line sorry because they they don't manage to get their personal terms with the other club sorted the player that you're swapping so i'm going to try and avoid that a little bit more in the future just so that we can get signings in and done easily jamie benoit gittins bino benoit i don't know gittins we're going to call him uh he's going to be a sporadic player he's kind of a, a future hot topic but not quite now i'm going to counter that i'm going to ask for five years from the young lad proper nailing down for a couple of seasons um i don't want a release clause i'm not too bothered about that at all uh, salary wise then so he's on 1.7 currently I don't mind giving him like 10k a mm, do I mind giving him 10k a week I think 8k a week with a 200,000 pound signing on bonus and then I'm going to add the bonus in if he gets 10 appearances he gets another 200k I think that's pretty good for a guy who's 17 years old he's reasonably happy with that offer he's going to take it that's another player in the door. He's not, a, he's not a star man right now, but in the future, he will be. Oh, God. What's FIFA 23 going to think of that transfer? Is it up to scratch? We are about to find out. He's going to be put, put through his paces, but let's see exactly what they rate this. So, the transfer's come in for 2.5 million for Jamie Gittins. Is it decent? A C. Okay, we probably could have done better on the price then. Could have saved 650k apparently, but I think we've done pretty well there. It says that he's not good enough. Uh, but we have completed the challenge of signing at least three players younger than 20 years old. So happy days. And hold on, because the objective actually says with potential greater than the average overall rating of players currently in the same position. So we just signed someone who's at least going to be an 84, if not better, because that's what the average position is at the moment with Sancho being the only left winger we've got. Um, interesting. So, you know what? He could be an absolute killer. As could the centre-backs, to be fair, because the centre-backs that we've signed as well are equally better than the average centre-back rating that we've got, potential-wise, anyway. So, that's very good. So, that is the end of this episode. You can see Gittins has come in. He's currently in the reserves for this team, but I'm actually probably going to end up using him as the left winger um, within the reserve team. So, we might get some cup games and that sort of thing. At the moment, the team hasn't actually changed massively in this episode, but we've made a lot of signings down below. We've got Allison, who's coming from the youth team. We've got Kosanu, 
who's obviously been in the club since the last episode and Collins as well has come in we were unlucky to lose out on one signing I think in the future we need to be a bit more generous with our wages and hopefully we'll get the players in that we think are going to be good high flying young talents that's it for this episode guys it probably was a very long one because we had a lot of explaining as to the direction of this series going forward we're going to be looking at trying to make it so that it's more of a focusing on young talents and bringing young talents into man united and getting rid of pretty much all of the old players so hopefully you guys think that's a bit more exciting and a bit more of a rebuild for manchester united uh, it's gonna be interesting to see if we do manage to move on any of the players that are currently in the starting 11 because they're, they're they're old and nobody wants them but we we can try anyway thank you very much for watching this episode comment down below with any uh, feedback on the series and recommendations for players we should buy subscribe to the channel if you are new and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>